This week on Cracked Science, a crackdown on crazy avocados, and has biohacking been hacked by purveyors of nonsense? Hey, this is Jonathan Jerry, and you're watching Cracked Science, the bi-weekly show from the McGill Office for Science and Society that separates sense from nonsense on the scientific stage. Let's start with Finland cracking down on avocados. Don't panic, you can still buy guacamole in Helsinki. What you can't buy is a ticket to see this guy at the upcoming Biohacker Summit in Finland. This is David Avocado Wolf. Remember this name, if only as a sign of which Facebook friends to quietly unfollow. What Wolf pushes is the power of herbs and so-called superfoods to keep you young and healthy. On his website, he describes himself as a health, eco, nutrition, and natural beauty expert. If I look like Kenny G's less successful older brother, I would also be pushing the natural beauty agenda to help me sleep at night. His website is full of listicles about weight loss, detox, and skin complexion, and his videos promote obscure herbs that he cultivates on his farm. So far, some fairly run-of-the-mill claims, but nothing compares to what he thinks of solar panels. David Wolf is a man with over 94,000 Twitter followers who believes that solar panels suck the light out of the sun, making sunlight a non-renewable resource. He is a man with 11 million Facebook followers who thinks gravity is an illusion. Gravity is not intrinsic to matter. That Carl Sagan idea that was sold to us on Cosmos, on PBS, was sold to us deliberately to actually confuse us, just so you know that. That gravity is intrinsic to all matter, we're fighting gravity, we have to push our way through gravity to launch a craft up into outer space, all this nonsense. It's like somebody took a motivational speaker from the 90s and Johnny mnemonic him with Deepak Chopra's books, a Woodstock fever dream, and the Goop website. And we can laugh at him, but some of his public statements are downright dangerous and irresponsible. It'll come as no surprise to learn that David Wolf is anti-vaccination, and that his medical sounding advice for parents of young children is downright scary. If your kid has an ear infection, Give them essential oils or garlic. Your child has asthma? Who needs bronchodilators when you've got ginger? This guy is a wolf in David Wolf's clothing. Dan Broadbent of the site A Science Enthusiast explains David Wolf's rise to fame on social media with the old bait and switch maneuver. First, inundate Facebook with cute pictures or motivational memes to gain a massive following. Then, Throw in an anti-vax meme, which will now reach your 11 million followers. Let the misinformation spread like a virus against which no one is now vaccinated. The reason I bring him up now is that someone finally saw through the thick cloud of hippie smoke and deplatformed him at a conference. David Wolf was slated to speak at the Biohacker Summit, and many people were not happy. They voiced their concerns on the summit's Facebook page, and on September 12th, the conference organizers released the following statement. New information has surfaced in our investigation about David Wolf's background and has changed our stance regarding his suitability for inclusion as a speaker in this conference. In this process, we have taken into account the feedback we have received from our valued biohacker community. As a result, we have decided to remove David Wolf from the list of speakers. And skeptics, scientists, and doctors everywhere rejoiced, but why was he invited in the first place? Didn't the organizers look this guy up before sending him the golden ticket? When you Google his name on the first page of results, you get his rational wiki page, which mentions his spiritual connection to chocolate and his belief that mushrooms are from space, the what culture listicle on the crazy beliefs he has, Yvette Dantomont's investigation of the guy, and science-based Dr. David Gorski's blog post. Do they have Google in Finland? Can we send one of those Google cars to check? Is that what those cars are for? So David Wolf won't get the chance to spread his natural cow turds to would-be biohackers, but you know what? I'm sure he's not bummed out in the slightest. 
let's go over David Avocado Wolf's nine reasons why you shouldn't care about being disliked. Life's too short. People don't really think about you that much. It's none of their business. People change their minds. They don't know what's best for you. You have to deal with the consequences. What's right for others isn't always right for you. Trying to please everyone could backfire. And you can't please everyone. Keep on drumming, David Avocado. Keep on drumming. Knowing that David Avocado Wolf has been kept out of this biohacker summit, we may be content to think that gravity has been restored to the universe and that the summit will be allowed to proceed according to its strict scientific agenda. Not so fast. For those of you who have never heard of biohacking, it's the loose idea of breaking the code of your own biology to enhance your life. For example, gaining a better understanding of how much sleep your body needs and finding the optimal sleep schedule for you. Now, this may sound reasonable on its surface, but what many biohackers do is get lost in the data, looking for patterns and falling for false positives. Dr. Steven Novella, a neurologist and prominent skeptic, has referred to it as a rebranding of the usual self-help pseudoscience. And a look at the Biohacker Summit speakers will confirm that. Liviu is the CEO and co-founder of Cyborg Nest, a company aiming to help people expand their perception of reality by adding artificial senses to their life. Cyborg Nest launched the North Sense, a miniature piece of technology connecting the owner to the Earth's magnetic field. For $425, you too can own a compass that vibrates against your chest whenever you face north. Then there's Oli Posti from Finland who had a progressive disease with no known cure and guess what he did? After eating his way out of multiple sclerosis, no, 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 you do not eat your way out of multiple sclerosis. This is blatant pseudoscience. This is basically your interview for the position of Goop's holistic grub guru. These bionic men and nutrition hackers play into our fantasies of turning ourselves into superheroes, something the child in all of us can certainly recognize. Speaking of children, there was a speaker slated to give a talk at the summit who was described as a Canadian young health expert. His name is Daniel Bissonnette, and he is 12 years old. Now, I don't want to be too rough on him because A, he is a child, and I don't want the word callous to be written on my funeral urn, and B, he promotes healthy eating to children his age, and that's a very noble goal. There is such a thing as junk food, and we should embrace public figures who promote healthy eating. Unfortunately, Daniel falls into the same trap as so many purveyors of food purity. He believes that cocoa is a superfood that will boost brain power and give you a cognitive punch. He also spoke to CBC News about his vegan diet. I realized I had certain mental capabilities that other kids didn't have. I had certain advantages, certain strengths that came from eating the food I eat. Now, where have I heard this before? Didn't you know? Todd's vegan. Daniel Bissonnette has also authored a book on breakfast food, and guess who wrote the foreword? David Avocado Wolf. Now, at the time of this recording, Bissonnette is no longer listed as a speaker for the Biohackers Summit. They tell me this is due to scheduling issues. Scheduling issues. Not because he thinks a vegan diet will turn you into a superman, that's apparently fine. But even with Wolf and Bissonnet out, we are left with herbalists, would-be cyborgs, and men who drown themselves in millions of personal data points in an attempt to become scientists. And if you're wondering why I said men, check out the only two women speaking at this conference. They do yoga. I don't want to come down too hard on biohacking in general because it is such a hodgepodge of observations and interventions but this particular lineup in Finland is looking less like fringe science and more like pseudoscience. 
My recommendation this week is Yvette D'Entremont's investigation of David Avocado Wolf, published on August 7th on The Outline. She not only lists some of his absurd beliefs, but also details the various money-making ventures he's been involved in, shines a light on his blatant plagiarism, and looks into his academic credentials. You'll find the link in the description down below. That's it for this week. I'll be back two weeks from now with a whole new show. In the meantime, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and check out our website at mcgill.ca/oss.